I guess you could take that question and make it into something big or whatnot, but I think it just boils down to the chemistry of who we are as a cast. Uh, I, I think we all took... Oh, we all were incredibly lucky that just from the pilot, from the first episode, um, with Noah playing our father, he sort of took on somewhat of a fatherly figure, and, and then we sort of would play into that, and then we all got along so well. I mean, we're here in London right now, and we all go out. We were out yesterday, we'll go out tonight. We've all uh, gotten together and, and, and really gotten along really well. Um, so I'd say that's an aspect of it, on top of... I really think that because we've changed our writing staff so often, that that's made it interesting too. That it, it's it's hard to guess where it's going to go, which, uh, like we were saying earlier, can be difficult because you you want that control of feeling like okay, I know where my character's going. But I think it's better when it's left up to a whole new group of people to come in and and put their stamp on it, but still pay respect to where we've been. Um, that's I, I really enjoy when we get a new writing staff. And, we also have a different, as far as um, differentiating us from other alien invasion shows, from the very get-go, we have a slightly different concept, which is that we, most, at least from my experience, most alien invasion uh, movies or shows focus on the invasion, and right off the bat, we, you know, we start six months after in our pilot, so the focus has always been different. I guess the, the, the similar themes and, and tones, but the 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 ramifications of that original decision have um, impacted our show for its entire run. I think this season is really interesting too because we, I mean, we have we get separated right at the beginning, and we have these very very different storylines, and one of them's reminiscent of like Holocaust kind of you know reform schools. One of them's very rem reminiscent mm -hmm. of the ghettos, um, and you know people in an entrapment. One of them's very very free in this like creepy, like happy way that's that's magical and, and weird. Cultish kind of quality. Yeah, cultish. And there's aspects, like right. there's just all these different <coughs> drastically different environments this season. That's really cool. And the, the yeah, way that they understand. It's it's been, it was a weird season because we're very used to you know, we've been on the show for a while and it's had a consistent look mm -hmm. for most of its yeah. run. Like we're we we've been very cool. used to waking up every day and going to lumber mills and Abandoned factories and like that's there's a, there's a gray yep. um, color scheme that we were just we're very used to that environment and this year like Saint Shell said we we got split up and some of the of the groups were in environments that look like that but a couple of us weren't we were in these colorful places the or people's these temple kind of these weirdness going on yeah, yeah. Uh, really <laughs> alternately designed um, locations that really it, it almost felt like a different show yeah. Um, so that was interesting. And in terms of where we are now, I guess my final question, um, looking to the future, it would be really interesting to hear for each of you what you'd most like to see, not just from the series overall, because obviously, like you say, it's kind of going in a lot of different directions and taking chances, but specifically for your character, if there's any territory that you haven't explored yet that you'd really like to, I guess, something with the hands of man again. Yeah, well, it's, it's interesting. Um, I think for Pulp, it'd be... Like, I think they, they were going in a direction for a while, and the nice thing is that the stories take time to unfold, but... To really have Pope be, uh, uh, perhaps get even, even bigger, become a bigger problem for Mason and, and all that kind of stuff and really give Pope uh, a real significant measure of power that, you know, to be the bad guy, be a bit of a bad guy. You know, it's, it's good to have a bad guy in a show. Uh, so as much as, just if anything, as a, as a conflict for the Noah Wiley character, for the Mason character, you know, he's got enough stuff going on and yet within your own ranks there's a... Uh, that other kind of conflict. So I don't know, just for Pope to, to continue as he was doing. This this year he was kind of stripped away of a lot of uh, his power and stuff like that, which is which is really interesting. So I'd like to see him rebuild a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Lord is, I, I, we got asked this question earlier, and mm -hmm. I, <laughs> I just simply uh, kind of want her to be happy. <laughs> as I, you know, I don't want the, the ease of, of that, um, but, you know, to just kind of fall into herself and not be afraid to mask that with any any certain religion or job or whatever, but just really kind of show who she is. Um, so. um, I think like Drew was saying, there's something fun about this season in that we got to work with, a, a lot of us got to work with actors and with characters that we hadn't really interacted with before, um, because most of us mm -hmm. are used to a small, relatively small circle, um, 
with me, it's always been my family members. Um, and this year, I got to expand outside that a little bit. So to, you know, in the future, there's a hundred plots that could happen. They're all equally exciting to me. But if I can um, get the chance to work with some of the other casts that I haven't really um, spent much time with in the show, that would be anything that would cause that would be ideal. Be fun. I'd love to see Hal uh, hop on one of the beamers and go off with the aliens in space and then have his own spin-off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, We'd so, all love to see that. <laughs> that <was a> deal. <laughs> um, well, what happens this fourth season? Um, it's especially the second half of, of this season. It's a it's a very transformative year for Hal. Um, so I'm I'm really excited as to where it could go in the fifth season. And it's hard for me to to sort of talk about what direction that would be without giving things away, but. Um, I'm, I'm about as excited for the next season as I was at the end of, what was that, the second season when Hal was going through what ended up being the evil Hal side of things. Mm -hmm. um, because it was obviously setting up for something that was so different than what Hal usually is. And I feel like um, something's not like that, but in a way that it, it's a whole another side of Hal that we could possibly see next season um, that I'm just going to put my hands up and, and let the writers take it wherever they're going to take it. Luciano, where would you like to see your character? <laughs> well, I'd like to see my character somehow come back alive. <laughs> um, but where I would have liked to see her go, I would have, I would have loved to... Um, I mean, I have, I have my own backstory as to why she was the way she was and why she let herself go like that. Um, <laughs> and I, I would have loved to see what the writers would have come up with as to why, because I feel like Crazy Lee didn't have a youth, and that's what my story is that she never had a youth. And I got that from the last episode when I when I passed. How you know that line when she said, "I want to go to Disneyland when I get out of here," and that kind of made me understand her a little more. But then I died, so it didn't <laughs> go anywhere further. But I would have loved to see uh, the vulnerable side of Crazy Lee more and um, just what her backstory was and you know how she turned out to be the way that she was. <laughs>